to the content from Otaku Spirit episode 4. He says reaction, but this is a review. Let's see what he has to say. Well, that progressed pretty fast. Episode 4 of Aya Sometimes Hides Your Feelings in Russian. We already got a confession. We got a kiss. Everything. I don't know. Maybe. They well, <laughs> you know that anime? Giji Harem, right? What is it called? Pseudo Harem. I call that a pseudo confession and a pseudo kiss, right? The confession was in Russian. We understood, but she didn't think that she would understand. I don't know, it's weird. But the kiss also was also like, you know, European culture of pecking on the cheeks, but could it be seen as a kiss? Eh, maybe? They might turn it all into misunderstandings and just kind of sweep it under the rug, but Dan, that's progressing really, really fast, and I'll, and I'll take it. I'll take it all. But yeah, randomly, Hara Hara Yukai. We got the, the song from Haruhi. Right, this ending was supposed to be Haruhi something. All the fucking animes, legendary old classic animes that I never watched because I was too busy watching One Piece. Zimiya, just randomly out of nowhere. Really fantastic. I kind of wish that they would actually have taken the time to do the dance, but, you know, we can't get... They're not going to have enough budget for that shit. I did notice that, like, the visuals are... It's all right, right? It's cute seeing all the girls in different drip, their urban wear, but like they're not moving. It's all just like a still frame and then a zoom in of that still frame and then a different still frame with the same template girl, but in different clothing. I mean, they're making 12 separate endings with 12 separate songs. I don't expect them to actually have like a dance choreography. Everything. They have to focus on the actual show itself. But man, if they actually did the dance and they actually animated it, that would have gone viral. Like, it, the, the show's already going viral every single week with some certain clip, but... Pretty much. Damn, that would have been perfect. That would have been perfect. At least we got some good outfits for the characters. I love seeing characters in different outfits for EDs. Mm -hmm. I love when they do that, so I'll take what I can get. But anyways, episode four. Really fantastic episode. I love the aftercast moment with, <laughs> with Aya literally fighting with herself, just making cute little noises and just getting all flustered. That was in the bed, right? When she's like kicking her legs up and down. And yeah, pretty much rejecting herself. Like if we can't, if we can't have Kuze actually respond to what she said there, which kind of frustrates me. I kind of understand. I'll get into that in a minute. It would have been too early, but like, why not? It would have been an interesting scenario. Sometimes rom-coms like immediately delve into the confession scene and then it starts off as a relationship, right? This one is not doing that so far. That was a good moment to do it. Would have been pretty, I don't know. Her confessing in Russian, and then him like responding in Russian, and then she would be like, what? You knew this entire time? Maybe it's a bit too early, but that would have been a good moment. I could see it. But if we can't get him to at least respond, I guess she's going to <laughs> reject herself. But anyways, really good episode. Let's just kick it off from the beginning. Yes, opening up with Kuze, you know, coming back with Masha, and yes, the president trying to get him to join. Now, it is a cool little moment because it is sort of the president saying, you know, look, no matter what reason you have for joining the student council president or the, the actual council itself, it's not like you have to have some grand Bull. reason. Like, there's this expectation that I think Kuze has put upon himself why he wants to join or not join. And the president's kind of saying, you know, I joined because I wanted a girl. And he did <laughs> and it. Your reasoning is much more pure than mine. I just wanted to look good. And yeah, shows how much he kind of changed himself. And I mean, the reason now he's joining is to kind of help Adia with the student council shit too, right? So he's kind of joining because of a girl too. In order to get one of the most beautiful girls in the school. I don't think we've seen Chisaki yet. They might no. have shown her in the... I think she might be the maid girl. The more I think about it, of all the different girls that we haven't seen from the opening, that maid girl sticks out. I mean, she was shown in the flashback, actually, I think, when Yuki was sick. Is that the girl? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Cafeteria, but I don't think we've actually seen her yet. But hopefully here soon we will. And she'll probably be another character that'll be another waifu of the show. But yeah, this all kind of shifts into Aya trying to resolve the issue between... What if that girl speaks Russian too, bro? What if that girl is the actual third Russian girl that was hidden... The one that was on top of the fucking playground. No way. In the soccer club and the baseball club, which was my heart broke for the girl. Like she's just sitting there and she just can't handle it, which is a massive growth point for Alia because she's acknowledging her biggest fault. She pushes people away too much. She, that's always been a problem is that she pushed people away because they're not as serious as she is about each situation. And so she never meets people. And this is going to be her biggest flaw if she ever wants to become student council president. That part kind of pissed me off of how weak and submissive she was getting rolled by the different clubs but as otaku spirit just said that is like a flaw that she even herself admits saying like i was too alone following the path of solitude i don't even know how to deal with this shit anymore i wish that like she could have saved herself instead of kuzik coming in and doing all this shit but i guess it is in a way character progression by admitting faults that is literally her biggest flaw yes she's popular because she's beautiful and she's a hard worker but she doesn't have the hearts of people nobody will follow her 
and that's kind of leading itself literally Horikitsuzune from Class Ninja Elite. Like the parallels are insane. Into Kuze himself, if he will follow her, which is a massive thing for her. But yeah, she's at least acknowledging what her biggest fault is. These people won't listen to me because I can't capture their hearts. Now, granted, after she breaks down, and yes, my heart broke for her, pleading for somebody to help me in Russian, and Kuze nearly leaving. Kuze knew that this was a growth point for her. This is something she has to experience. Yeah, he low-key was outside listening the entire time and thinking, nah, I'm not going to bail her out just yet. She needs to learn from this shit. Again, just feels like classic elite shit. I can't save her all the time. She needs to learn this stuff. This is a learning point for her. He, ha he can't let it go. I Again, most every single person is going to be hearing that and going, yes, I'm going to walk in there. I'm going to save her. Granted, when Kuze comes back in there, his fix isn't really that these people want to follow him or that he can capture their hearts or anything like that. He just knows people. <laughs> That's really all it is. Alia is like, yeah. I can't do this because I push people away. Nobody will follow me. I can't capture people's hearts. Kuze's like, I know who captured whose heart in this room. <laughs> He's so smart. He literally just knows that this girl over here is with that guy over there. And so whatever she says, he's going to go along with it. So I'm going to I'm going to present something that allows them to say, yeah, this girl can go with them. And that will that will fix everything. And it's, it's sort of it's exactly what he did last time with the whole situation with Alia. He always plays on the boys wanting to be with the girls. The, the whole thing with Alia mm -hmm. with the school festival, he said basically that he offered to assist the girls with their projects if they help with the costumes. And so the boys were immediately okay with that. Like, he didn't even have to ask them. Because it just knows what takes, you know, what makes, like, young boys go. And it's just girls. The power of horny. Like, three birds, one stone. That's the crazy shit, too. I didn't realize the third bird. Because I knew, like, the compromise between, you know, the soccer and the baseball team and them helping each other out. But them moving that shit actually creates an opportunity for this manager girl from the soccer team to help the baseball team. But the manager is actually dating the soccer captain, so that gives an even more leeway. And then it's just like, holy shit, he's actually such a gigabrain Iona Koji moment there. First, he's like, I, I presented it to them, they'll accept it, <laughs> because they're gonna get to hang out with the girls. And this is the same thing. Well, I'm gonna resolve this issue by saying that the guys can hang out with the girls, and immediately they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll play by the riverbank. <laughs> it's so funny, because again, it's like, Aya initially thinks that, man, he's just so good at winning these people over. He presented something that would never have happened. But anyways, yeah, he admits to it later on. But yes, this all leads into the president's Keikaku. It was all according to Keikaku for the president. Kuze joins the group. And yes, immediately... That Manabu. Actually fucking Manabu, bro. Planned the entire time ahead. And Press just wants, like, Kuze to, like, get closer to Alia, I think. I don't know. Because, like, why is he wishing on Kuze to join the student council prep so badly? Because he saw the competency back in middle school shit. I'm not completely sure, but everything he does kind of pushes those two together more and more. That makes Alia think that he's joining to help So, And again, this still this kind of still sucks that she doesn't know that Yuki is his sister. Mm -hmm. Still to this point, she doesn't know that they're siblings. And so she's immediately thinking, oh, you're doing this because you like So. But now she kind of fights back, says, you know, look, I'm going to fight you no matter what. Even if you join forces with Yuki, I'm going to beat you. And... It kind of puts it more into perspective with the manga and the idea that, yes, he's acknowledging this is why I kind of like her. Like, she's very determined. She's always fighting. This is what makes Alia great. And so he accepts to actually help her. So he got... Yeah, and then he says, shut up and take my hand, bitch. The running mate... We got we got our team up right here. I'm I'm kind of kind of I'm kind of curious at this point who's gonna be Yuki's uh, running mate. If who does Yuki have right now? And again, if and, and, and just looking at the poster picture, I just feel like it's gonna be the maid girl that we just haven't seen yet. That is the only last significant character from the poster or from the opening of all the girl identities. And if that's the case, then it's gonna be the vice president. I don't know. I don't know who this you know girlfriend of the captain is. We need to fucking wait until all those characters are shown. If he's ditching his sister, <laughs> that kind of sucks because earlier in the episode, we had that brief moment where it showed Yuki basically calling for Kuze to always be at her side. Yeah. It was like that little she brief gonna be shot mad. of saying, like, she's going to be so fucking mad, man. Like, Yuki, I don't think would be too happy that her big bro sided with Aria, especially how competitive she is with her big bro. That's going to be spicy. You're always going to be at my side. You're my brother, right? It kind of makes me, it kind of breaks my heart. All, all the Yuki fans are probably heartbroken right now because it's like, literally, you're supposed to always be at her side and you're not going to be at her side when she becomes, you know, when she goes for president. You're going to, you're going to join Alia's group. I wonder how many people actually prefer Yuki over Alia. 
I would just, there's a lot of people hating on Alia last episode for my chat, but you guys are just fucking retarded and just trying to make, you know, controversial memes for no reason to just get a reaction out of people. I think that a lot of people prefer Alia more than Yuki. It's, it's a hard struggle, man. It is a hard struggle. I fully understand. It's a hard struggle. But no, this flushes her. She just blurts out that she loves him out of nowhere, which I, there was a side of me that was like, this girl <laughs> should be Masha. Of all evidence points towards Masha, but you just never know. I, I would love it if there was like a fucking third hidden Russian girl, dude. <laughs> Why does this not shock him? Because he, he doesn't show a response to it, like when he's standing there. Now, granted, he does immediately get a flashback, and this goes to my theory that I had last episode, for those that mm. missed that video. Let's hear it. Essentially, the whole situation with Masha, her having the lock, uh, the locket with his picture mm -hmm. in it. Of him. Well, it seems like it's his picture, right? But you can't see the eyes because the light is completely shining over the eyes for whatever reason. Again, just another, just another thing that they do to just be like, are you sure? Are you sure this is really him? And when he was a kid. Yes, the fact that Alia has the blue eyes that the girl yeah. has from the past. Yes. Neither one of That's them have weird. blonde hair. Yeah. My current theory is that the two of them were merged together in his mind because he was going. Oh. Huh, okay. This is a big brain theory that I've never actually thought about. Now we're thinking outside the box. Now we're thinking that what we see as the audience is actually. Kuze's delusion based off of the confusion he had from the past. That's why they're kind of getting mixed in. I can totally see that perspective. That's actually fucking genius. I, I never thought about it like that. Because I always thought that like what's been presented to me is just the facts. But if we could think back to childhood memories and things are getting blurred, that's definitely feasible. I like that theory. Going through a very difficult time when he was younger. And so you take the blue eyes from oh. Alia, you take pretty much the combination of silver and brown, which I don't know, that's probably a stretch there to make blonde. No, I honestly, I like this. I like this. It's better than just some bullshit of, oh, it was Masha at the end of the day, and it's just her hair changed and her fucking eye color changed, or the third Russian girl, like, the third hidden girl theory is kind of bullshit, right? But this one is actually grounded in some level of reasoning and logic that I could definitely see happen. But I'm thinking the two, uh, the two girls, Masha and Alia, in the past became one girl in his mind. Because everything that he's recalling mm. is the same with them. Yeah. Now, granted, this girl from the past that had blonde hair always called him Masachika. Never called him Sachan. Sakun. Okay. Whereas Masha calls him Sachan. Yeah. But it's obvious that he's having these feelings with these two girls. With the last episode, when Masha was trying to comfort him, he said that it felt nostalgic. So my assumption there is when he was in the past and he was going through a hardship, she comforted him. Yes. Now, and that hardship was like the divorce, right? The parents getting divorced and he felt sad and she would console him back in the day. The head pat, you know, the whole thing reminded them of the past. So I was like, it's got to be Masha. But with this new theory, it's like, hmm, it can be both at the same time. Jump to here. And now we have a kiss on the cheek and we have her basically saying, I love you. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, I know where he's feeling nostalgic again. He's recalling this girl from the past because the Alia in front of him seems familiar. So again, that's that's playing into my theory, and it's all kind of confirming my theory. I that like that both theory. Both these sisters went to that park, ran to him, mm. and he learned Russian to talk to them. Yes, it's just he has merged them two into one. Or maybe they were all both dressing up when they were younger for some weird reason. But it doesn't explain why Alia hasn't recalled who Kuze is. That perspective, we're still like, exactly, right? She just doesn't know anything about him. And that, we don't get that perspective. Only Masha seems to recognize, but Arya doesn't. And maybe the mangaka is intentionally doing that to keep Alia's perspective from showing up just in case for, I don't know what they're planning for the future. Masha does, and that might be because she fell in love with him first and never wanted to forget him, whereas Alia kind of moved on. That could be as well, but anyways, yes. She confesses to him. Immediately, he recalls this girl from the past, and then that's pretty much the kind of the wrap-up there. And yes, <laughs> the slap, because he was thinking about some other girl. You were thinking of Yuki, weren't you? <laughs> Again, just tell her. <laughs> just tell her who Yuki is. There has to be a reason. There has why to be an don't. actual story reason why they have chosen not to let anybody know that yeah. they're siblings. There's got like, what? Why is that the case, right? They, they're not ashamed of anything. What are they trying to hide? I don't know. I, I don't know. It was just like, okay, which is easier for us to... Maybe ever since the divorce, they live separately, right? It, but, but, but why would that be the reason why they would not fucking let each other's identity know? It must be so important. 
just another fucking time bomb, like a ticking time bomb, right? Just like, what's happening here? What are they setting up? It's so interesting and mysterious. That keeps the audience engaged. Gotta be something there. It probably has to do with the fact that they both have different names because their families have moved on. The mother yeah. probably went and remarried or something like that. Yeah. And there's probably a, a story reason why they're not wanting to reveal that because it would probably essentially reveal their parents had a divorce and that's just really not something they want to talk about. So that's probably the story reason. But no, she realized that he's obviously got a little bit of a numbness on his cheek, so she goes over there and pecks him on the cheek. Now, it, it, the anime kind of plays it out like she cheek kissed him and mm. didn't actually plant the lips. And so he's like, oh, <laughs> that's, the lips. That's, it felt like something else. <laughs> In the manga, it, it puts it as that she she admits that she made the kiss noise with her lips alone. <laughs> she didn't actually plant Chew. the lips on his cheek. She just touched his cheek. So they kind of did okay. the same thing there, but it, it was kind of a weird thing because it said a, a cheek kiss. It's a pseudo kiss. She knew what she was doing, using the fucking European customs to hide the fucking authentic kiss. It was a pseudo kiss, bro. And it's like, what's a cheek kiss? <laughs> I've never heard of a cheek kiss. It's a fucking indirect kiss, bro. It just... <laughs> It is. No, no, no. Well, it's 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 different. Like, an indirect kiss sometimes is like when you drink out of the same cup and you know you 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 fucking put your lips on that shit, right? But this is I it's pseudo kiss. I'm gonna go with that. And uh, so I immediately when I watched the anime, I thought that she was admitting that she literally kissed him on the cheek. But no, it, it she's not wanting to admit that. She's just saying that I made the noise with my lips. Either way, it's like. Damn, girl got bold. Girl went bold out of nowhere. She so badly wanted to kiss him, but doesn't want to admit that she kissed him. It's cute. It's cute. But no, I like the fact that at the very end is like, of all the times, any other time he's like, why won't you just say what you want to say? Why do you keep saying this stuff in Russian? Because I can understand you. This is the one time he's like, literally, please say it in Russian. Tell me which one it is in Russian because you won't tell me. And she didn't. It was great. I loved it. It was cute. But no, the aftercast. I love this little bit. Yeah. Seeing Alia just sit there, just, just girl geeking out like she is just flustered all get just kicking her feet like i don't like you i don't like you i don't like you. i'll never like you cap why did i say that why did i Sundere. say that but it's like kind of trying to cement the fact that she doesn't want to fall in love because she has something to do like she and she was talking about how like she can't get you know distracted now because we need to run for student council press right so that was kind of like a reason why she was making on like why i won't make advances or why i can't fall in love right now she is dead set on i need to focus on becoming the president now and I can't worry. But like, because we're a running mate, we're going to be spending more time alone together. It's just going to be even more intimate from now on. Be about being in love. And plus, yes, the, the doubts that she has and the idea that if she does confess to him, he might reject her. And that's obviously going to Never be something happening. that she's going to struggle with. Never Anybody would happen. That's in love with somebody is going to struggle with the idea that if I confess, are they going to accept it or are they yeah. going to reject me? And can I take that rejection? But yeah, like I said, it was super cute. So you just <laughs> squeeing and like it literally looked like she got like punched in the stomach by imagining him rejecting her. It's just way too cute. But yes, wrapping up the episode with Masha coming in and saying that she met somebody. She she had a great little experience. She ran into Kuze, understands why she likes him. Again, Alia doesn't want to admit that she likes him. But, but. Masha says, I'm going to steal him then, huh? I don't think she would. I think that she's just trying to give her a gentle push because she knows that her little sister is so in love. And if that means that she's going to tease her a little bit, because obviously Masha loves Masachika too, to a degree, back in the past at least. I think it's just like a little friendly push. It's nothing actually competitive. Although it would be fun if she actually tried to make, you know, Alia jealous by making advances. Masha's saying, do something or you're going to lose him. Somebody else is going to come and get him. Now, I'm still of the mind here that Masha has given up on Kuze mm. because she knows that her sister likes him. Yeah. I, I got that feeling with the previous episode. I think that it's hard. I don't think Masha's going to pursue. I think that she knows that Alia loves Kuze and she loves Alia so much. Ain't no way Masha does something so selfish. She's going to back out of the race and it's going to be sad. I hope she gets her own mans. For her. But I think she is literally going, again, that whole scene when she first ran into Kuze again. It was literally, I know who you are, you're Sachan. She wanted to say something, but immediately she stopped herself and goes, oh, no, this is the one for my sister. I can't yeah. say that. I can't, I can't admit this. And she stepped back. And I think that's really what it is. And the sign later on of her comforting him is a sign that she still inherently wants to be with him. Yes. But I think she decided, I'm going to step back. I'm not going to do this.
Ah, uh, I hope that Masatsuka is not Sachan, and then that Sachan is a separate another dude that just exists out of nowhere. And then Masha can get Sachan, and then Arya can get Kuze. Nah, it's probably most likely Sachan is Kuze, right? I'm, I'm just memeing with that just because the pendant didn't show Kuze's eyes, and it was like a very bright light casted over, so it's just like it's another fucking entirely separate character that Sach, you know has memories with Masha that's so closely intertwined with what, you know, they had to do in the past, but like, that is such a fucking reach. It would be such a reach, but it would be a happy ending for Masha. I'm gonna let my sister have him. She is deeply in love with him. And again, I think it plays into the whole skip scene with Masha talking to her friends, saying that Alia has a problem with making friends and she's too brash and she pushes people away. Mm -hmm. I think that she's like, this is the only person that will be with her because she's so, she pushes people away so much. <laughs> Ain't no one wants to date my little sister because she's such a bitch. So you need to make sure that Masachika can get with her. She's finally found somebody. I won't break that for her. This one person, this one shot she has. But I do think the scene is her saying, you need to move. You need to step up. Yeah. I can almost imagine her feeling like if you don't, I will eventually. Mm -hmm. But I still think that she wants to have Alia. She wants to push Alia. I hope we get some funny moments with Masha teasing her little sister and making advances at school to make her jealous, but I don't think it would be ever too serious. But I would like to see moments like that. Please, go. Do it. But we'll see. It's probably going to be another 50 episodes of this show keeps going in adaptation before we finally get that. But hey, at least, again, we got a confession, even though it was still in Russian, and yeah. a kiss. That's a big, bold move. Kind of. Anyways. Overall, fantastic episode. Really love it. Still fantastic series. Again, no etchy, but it is what it is. They... I prefer no Echi, to be honest. I don't want Echi in this show. It just ruins the fucking immersion. I don't need a fucking scene of Masatsuka fucking grazing Arya's fucking pussy. Like, no. I, that shit just makes me feel weird. Just like, just, just maintain what we're, we're going on. Like, we don't need to rely on degenerate, like, fan service for this show to do well. It's already doing so well. Well, the incest joke, honestly, did take it over the edge on episode two, but personally... I prefer no etchy in shows like this. It just kind of ruins the purity and just this degenerate fan service for sake of what? Just appeasing a bunch of horny 13 year olds. There's a lot of those kids that watch shows like this, but at the end of the day, we're all just chasing the numbers. They had in the manga technically when Masha came home, Alia was in the bath. And so I don't know if that was in the light novel because it's technically supposed to be based on the light novel. The art style is very different in the manga, but they did have a scene with Alia and Masha in the bath together. So that might've been like a nice little etchy scene they could have thrown in here to keep the etchy going. But I, it almost feels like at this point, I think they're done with the etchy. Like they use the etchy to get people interested in the show. Yeah, in episode one. And then now that we've kind of established this, the etchy's kind of going out the window, which is, yeah, it sucks, because the etchy was really good. I actually really enjoy the etchy in the show. It's not too much. It's just enough. It's just like a little bit of a spice in there. <sighs> when I watch shows like Roche Dere, it is a different experience from when I watch shows like Gushing Over Magical Girls, because when I watch Gushing Over Magical Girls, I know what I'm signing up for, and I fully embrace the etchy because that is the core focus of the show. But when I watch some of these rom-coms, it just feels like these etchy scenes just kind of breaks the immersion for me, or breaks this level of sincerity it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth i just prefer like if you're gonna start with that please let me know that it's actually so i can you know readjust and calibrate my mind to be like yep that's that's kind of show but with roche today happening so far it's just like don't need it why do you need to do it just to appease some fucking coomers is, is that really what's gonna make this show go super viral i guess episode one it did really help with that i don't know there, but will live is still a fantastic show i love the characters love the chemistry and cannot wait for more so that's my thoughts on episode four hope you guys enjoy this video as always if y'all know what to do please go give mr otaku spirit a like on the video check out his channel if you haven't and yes i enjoyed last episode it was it's kind of crazy how each week after each week there is not a slow episode every episode has been impactful and like, it's just gonna keep going this way. This surely is one of the best animes of this season, if not the best, and hope you guys are enjoying it too. See you on the next one.